Welcome to the shop. In this video, I'm going to go over some quick setup and configuration instructions for the Torch Armadillo. Now, the Torch Armadillo requires assembly. It comes disassembled in order to fit in the box. And since it is designed to be mounted to a workbench or a lathe or some other thing you want to use it with, um, there's some uh, safety concerns that need to be addressed before we start. Glass working torches are hot and can be very, very dangerous. You can be seriously injured or killed if you get hit with the flame from a glass working torch. I, don't, I can't take responsibility for installing the rails and making sure that they're securely installed and safe to use. This is 100% completely up to you. And if you don't believe that you have the tools or the skills or are in any way uncomfortable with safely installing this system, please return it for a full refund. I assume no responsibility whatsoever for installation problems if it's installed incorrectly. So, got to get that out of the way. The, the system is a modular system with a number of different options. There are fixed and adjustable uh, vertical height adjustments and horizontal and vertical mounting. The, uh, basically what you do is you get the thing out of the box, you take all the pieces out, you look at them, you identify them, and make sure that you understand how all of the pieces work. Much of it is fairly straightforward. Much of it you can just look at and figure out, oh yeah, I know what this is doing. Uh, there's a couple of things that are slightly complex that probably, uh, that's why I'm making the video, to talk about some of these uh, little details, but in general, anybody with a, a good mechanical intuition who has tools and knows how to use them and is comfortable with drilling holes and putting in screws, you should have no problem installing this. So let's get down to the details. The first thing that I'm going to be talking about is the sliding bearing rail. This is the long ground piece of steel that usually in the standard shipping box about 46 inches long, but you know, custom lengths can be ordered. This is a standard 20 millimeter linear bearing rail and they are available from a wide variety of sources. You can get them on eBay, you can get them on Amazon, you can get them on uh, you know, get them from Alibaba. They're, they're, they're widely available and as far as I know they're mostly interchangeable. So if the one that I supplied ever gets damaged or you want a longer one or you want to set up another one somewhere else and uh, you can, you don't have to buy them from me. They're, they're a, a common product that's fairly easily available. So let's get a, a slightly more close-up view here. And of course, I'm, I'm doing this video without a camera operator, so it's a little bit tricky for me to try to use the cameras. So the rail has a large number of screw holes on it. And these, screw, these are counterboard screw holes. And since the rail is Chinese, it's pr they're probably designed for some sort of metric fastener, but I've found that, uh, get that in, in the camera focus here, that a, a 1032 uh, socket head screw fits nicely. Now here I have a reasonably long, this is like a 1032 by two and a half inch socket screw, and I would recommend using, well, let, let's go back a step. Yes, you could screw these in with a wood screw or a sheet metal screw, but they're, they're a little bit weaker. A through hole with a machine screw 
a 1032 machine screw with a washer and a nut is going to be a much more secure mounting and that's going to be what I'm going to recommend if at all possible, if there's any way that you can make it work, use a machine screw with a washer and a nut to securely mount it in place. And then of course the other thing I want to say, getting back to safety again, you know, you can't be too safe. Uh, after mounting and setting it up, before you turn on the flame, run it through its full range of motion and if it feels even the least bit uncertain or precarious, fix it. Don't light the torch until you are 100% confident that all is well, it's secure, it's not going to fall apart, it's not going to come loose. Uh, using a, a, a screw, a wood screw or a sheet metal screw that's too short, into, say, particle board or some other material that doesn't have the same strength as good, solid, nice timber is, is really, it, it, it's unsafe and don't do it. Um, if you're going to use the sheet metal screws or wood screws, use a bunch of them and make sure that you're screwing into solid lumber. And I mean like a two by four. I don't mean particle board. I don't mean the edge of plywood. I don't mean you know, anything else that may be degraded or rotten or in any other way uncertain about its strength. It's really important. The, the uh, torch armadillo is basically a lever that is applying a force and twisting this fairly small rail. And so you can imagine the amount of twisting force that's amplified by the lever action when you have a torch extended out all the way. So secure mounting, very, very important. If you're going to be mounting it on a vertical surface, then it gets a little bit trickier depending on the, the construction of your bench. If your bench has a nice big fat piece of framing lumber, let me get my hand over here so that you can see what my hand is doing where I'm talking about nice big fat piece of framing lumber sitting down here that you can confidently screw into. That's fine. Otherwise, you're going to need a metal angle bracket screwed at the top with, a, with machine screws and through the side with machine screws or some other very secure mounting. Don't just put it on the edge of a piece of plywood and screw into the end grain of plywood or particle board, it will fail and you will have a really bad day. So enough of that. Here's an update. When I made the original video, I shipped the unit in a different state of disassembly and this required doing some fairly tricky assembly that I kind of, as I thought about it a little bit more, decided that, you know, maybe there's a better way of uh, disassembling it for shipment that does not require the same degree of trickiness. Of course, I'm going to leave in all of the instructions for the tricky parts in case you ever end up disassembling it uh, for one reason or another and decide that you need to deal with the Teflon washers or get the uh, the bearing off the rail, but in the uh, current shipping version, let me move the camera down here, I've got the slider assembly disconnected from the parallel arms and I put the screws that are necessary to assemble it into the screw holes. So all you have to do is kind of take those screws off and screw the parts together as you can probably imagine and it kind of go together like that. And the same thing is true on the other end where the screws are ready to go. Just take them out of the parts that they're stored in and screw them in. They only go in one way. You can't put it in upside down. And the sliding bearing also has mounting screws um, attached to it. I have included the keeper in case you ever need to take the sliding bearing off. 
But just in general, I think that the new packing method will be a lot easier for you to, uh, to assemble. So now back to the rest of the original video. Oh, and by the way, there's one more thing that I forgot on the original video, and I think I forgot it on the update, so now I'm coming back and trying again to describe what's going on here. So, attached with blue tape is a little piece of Delrin that can be used in connection with this knob to lock the slider in place if you don't want it to move super easily or along the rail. Um, I think uh, I kind of, for one reason or another, just seem to forget about that. So anyway, now we're going back to the original video. So the next thing to talk about here is going to be how to mount a GTT torch. The Standard mounting that I commonly ship with the, this first batch is designed for the smaller GTT torches. I happen to have a, a snub nose Mirage here on my setup. Um, for using a larger torch, I'm currently working on an extended handle version to support a Delta Mag. So the current version works on basically the torches that I know and the torches that I have and the torches I've tested on. And support for other torches will happen in the future as the product matures and I have more time to work on other things. So let's talk about how the pieces go together because there's a number of different assembly sequences that could be used and I've found this particular combination to be a, a good assembly sequence that seems to work well. So we start out that we have the, the main uh, mounting with a hole in it and a set screw and that's where the the vertical axle goes into the main mount. This is the blue anodized aluminum mount. Then we have a Teflon washer and this is what I call the torch bracket and you can see that it extends out here through a spacer into the handle bracket that holds the handle in place. Then comes the GTT torch, then comes another Teflon washer, and finally there's a final plate with the screw in it. So if I turn it around like this, I want to talk a little bit about, once again, about creating friction on rotary axes. That what you don't want to do is just have this screw head pressing down on a loose washer that's free to rotate up against this Teflon because what will typically happen, the Teflon would grab the washer, the washer would grab the screw head, and as you move the torch up and down, you'd be unscrewing the screw. So this plate is secured with a sliding pin this is a precision pin and a precision reamed hole, and it fits fairly tightly. And the idea is to keep this plate from rotating as you're tightening or loosening the screw. And when the assembly is in action, there's never any force acting on the screw that tends to unscrew it. So I'm going to take it apart now and show you there's one tiny little tricky part. It's mostly straightforward and mostly, you know, anybody with good mechanical intuition should be able to just look at it and go, oh yeah, dude, I get it. But there's a couple of things that, that probably should be discussed. Okay, let me see if I can get this in a better view. That what's going on here, this plate that attaches to the torch has a little pin, a little 1 16th diameter precision ground and hardened pin that is secured with, uh, with green Loctite, which means that it should never come out. And this is the indexing pin. Let's see if I can get a good view of this because it's a tiny bit tricky to, 
to show. The indexing pin, get it into frame here, the indexing pin fits into the gear on the GTT torch and secures it in place. And what you want to have is the, uh, kind of hard to do backward looking into a, into a camera, you want to have this surface parallel with the side of the torch, not the slope side, but you want to have the handle parallel to the, 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 this side of the torch for best operation. So I'm going to go put it together again and I'll show you what I mean. This is one of those things that's pretty crazy to try to to try to do on camera because no matter what I'm doing, my hand is always covering up the interesting part. So this is showing, and let me get this. This is showing the, the geometric alignment. It's not perfectly parallel, but it doesn't need to be. It, it, it just, you want to get it like roughly parallel, kind of sort of in the ballpark, good as it gets. And then the next challenge, let me zoom out a little bit here. The next challenge is to get the, the screw into the screw hole. Make sure you get it in nicely. If it feels like it's binding, stop working immediately. Don't strip the screw. It's a fairly fine thread screw, and yes, it is easy to cross thread. So as you're slowly and carefully tightening the screw, you need to realize that the pin has not yet engaged. Let me take the screw out a little bit so I can demonstrate. The pin has, has not completely engaged yet. So the pin is still not in the hole. So somewhere along the process, as you're tightening the screw, you need to make sure that the pin protrudes through the hole and doesn't get and doesn't get cocked to the side and start binding. So let me uh, let me zoom into that. Okay, there's a, a better zoomed in view. It's important to make sure that the pin is protruding through the hole and if you if you try to tighten it with the pin with with the uh, plate at a little bit of an angle, it will bind on the pin, and you'll notice, wow, this is really getting hard to turn. It should be very easy to turn; should be no problem at all. If you notice any binding, basically stop and take it easy. I think just in general, the assembly process for many things is, if it doesn't feel right, stop and think about it. Don't force it. So that pretty much covers the, uh, the assembly to the torch. Of course, there's, there should be the two Bellville washers, um, same as all the other axes for the same purpose and basically the same design. The screw does go in a fairly long distance. It goes all the way through the, the three-quarter uh, mounting block. So. Don't be surprised if it takes a lot of turns to get it to work. And that covers the torch mounting. Here's the, well, go back a step. I'm improvising this, so sometimes I get off on the wrong track. Um, <clears throat> the linear bearing, I typically ship them with the linear bearing installed on the rail, but sometimes linear bearings come off, sometimes you might want to take them off, sometimes they come off just because they come off. So I thought I'd take a few minutes to talk about the care and feeding of linear bearings. So see if we can get the, uh, can the autofocus, the autofocus is going to focus on this. Inside the linear bearing, 
is a bunch of little balls. And you see the piece of plastic that I'm moving in and out. This is the keeper. This keeps the balls from falling out. Now, they're not going to fall out just under normal use. You can turn it upside down. They're, they're not that unstable. But when you put a rail, when you put a bearing onto a rail, if you don't do it right, you can knock all the balls out. And you don't want to knock your balls out. So let's see if I, see if I can get this in the frame here. Boy, I wish I had a camera operator. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So to install a linear bearing on the rail, it's important to do it carefully and slowly and gently. And if the linear bearing is already attached to the full torch armadillo mechanism, take everything off. Don't try to install it with the full heavy torch and arm all put on and then trying to fiddle around the bearing. Disconnect from the bearing and install the bearing on its own separately. So in order to install the bearing, you first line up. Maybe I'll have to put on my glasses for this. You have to line up the edge of the rail and the opening in the side of the bearing. The bearing has a rubber wiper that acts to wipe off contaminants on the rail, which is a kind of a nice thing. It keeps it running smooth and keeps the bearing from getting contaminated. But the first thing you need to do is kind of like find the matching hole and very carefully get it started before pushing. Then carefully and slowly push it on. The keeper will fall out and now you have a nicely installed bearing. This next assembly comment is only applicable to the adjustable Z axis, the adjustable vertical axis, and it has to do with the proper operation of a shoulder screw and how it interacts with the arm and the Teflon washer. So this little guy here that I'm trying to keep in frame while I'm showing it. Yeah, this little guy here is a shoulder screw. And you can see that it's got a ground cylindrical portion, a precision ground cylindrical portion, and then what's called the shoulder which is the point, the, the kind of the, the, the line of transition between the uh, cylindrical ground portion and the screw thread. When th th these guys are commonly used as a way to provide an axle for a mechanism that isn't going to come loose. And you can see as I'm tightening it down here that the shoulder fits tight against the mounting surface and it should be tightened you know don't strip it but you should tighten it with authority to make sure that it's securely in contact with its mating surface now what makes this a tiny bit trickier is that when this is assembled we have a teflon washer so you can see the teflon washer here and what can happen, what you want is, let me try to, it's kind of difficult to, to show this all on video because everything that's going on here is really small, but what you want here is for the shoulder screw to be, you know, let me get this, you want the shoulder screw to be tight up against its mating surface and not pinching the Teflon washer. The Teflon washer should be on the cylindrical ground surface and not pinched between the shoulder and the mounting plate. Now, when you're assembling this thing, the, the parts that come with it will include 
a couple of Belleville washers. And a Belleville washer, for those who aren't familiar with it, is a spring washer that has extremely high spring force and a very low uh, profile, a very, a very short length. So you have a really, really short spring with a lot of force. A Belleville washer is a kind of a cup washer. It's a kind of like a section of a sphere with a hole in it and then the ring cut out. And as you look at the washer, it's not very dramatic which side is concave and which side is convex. But if you look at it and see the way the light reflects off of it, it's fairly easy to tell that this one has the convex side uh, facing up. This one has the concave side fix facing up. And the way this is assembled is you put the convex side toward the screw head, the two concave sides against each other so that you have a geometry kind of like this. And you can see how as you're tightening the screw, the washer is going to compress in this way. Who knows, maybe someday I'll make a really nice animation showing this, but with any luck you can figure it out just from a little hand waving and a crude demonstration. So the pair of Belleville washers goes on the shoulder screw first, and let me get that, there we go, get it in the camera frame, and then the arm, and then the Teflon, and then you screw it all together. And I think you can see right now how easy it is. It is the easiest thing you can do to pinch that washer because the washer is kind of kind of flopping around and there's there's not much, uh, let me get back in the frame, the washer is kind of flopping around a little bit. So you need to kind of nudge the washer around with your finger and then very carefully as you're tightening the screw and nudging the washer, it should be fairly easy to feel when the washer is centered and not pinched. So this is, it's not that hard to do, but the first time you do it, you might be a little nervous and just take it slow, take it easy. It's not that horribly hard to do. And once you get it uh, fully seated and you're sure that you're not pinching the washer, then crank it down and secure it nicely. Okay, now it's time to talk a little bit about the friction elements. The torch armadillo has friction elements on all of its moving axes. And the idea is that they should be adjusted so that as loose as possible, so it feels nearly effortless when you move, so you don't have to grunt against it, but strong enough that it holds position when you let go and doesn't drift. And in order to accomplish this, first of all, I include a really nice ball driver with every torch and uh, armadillo so that uh, it makes the adjustment easier. But let's talk a little bit about the construction of these friction elements and why they're, at least in my opinion, I think they're a, a pretty superior design to other methods of creating friction. So to start off with, I have a, a ground precision stainless steel shaft going through uh, bronze bushings that are precise. This is a precise assembly, and so there shouldn't be a whole lot of slop in here. It should fit within thousandths. And then the aluminum plate, a Teflon washer, a polished steel ring, which is attached to the stainless shaft, another Teflon washer, and another aluminum plate. And then remember Belleville washers? Well, we have two Belleville washers on each of the adjusting screws, and the adjusting screws are fine pitch, they're quarter 28 adjusting screws. 
So when you take the adjusting tool, this little ball driver, you have a nice range of adjustment as you're tightening these fine pitch screws and compressing the Belleville washers. And because there is no force acting to unscrew these screws, they shouldn't come loose during use. Of course, everything wears, every, there's, there's temperature changes. I can't guarantee that you can set it and forget it and never adjust it again. But I'm reasonably confident that this is a better friction design. I don't know, it, I've seen a lot of products that just kind of do it the cheap and dirty way. They'll have a shaft and a brass screw, just the head of the, 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 the shaft of the brass screw just touching the shaft and the screw it into place and they call that a friction mechanism. And, you know, I, I wanted to do something a little bit nicer than that. So that's the basics of how the, the friction mechanism works. The, the steel ring let me, if I can get a better view on the camera here. Yeah, the steel ring is secured to the stainless shaft with a little 1032 set screw. Now, in most cases, you don't have to unscrew this little screw because I assemble them before shipping them. And if you like it the way it is, you don't have to bother with anything and you don't have to unscrew the screw. But if you do want to unscrew the screw because you might want to uh, shorten a shaft, let's say the torch, the, the, the rod that holds the torch is simply a piece of round rod that's been cut off. If you want to shorten it, just chop it off and you can make it shorter. So if the, if the need ever arises to remove that little screw, make sure you use a good quality hex wrench. Don't reach in the junk drawer and get one with a rounded off end. Make sure you have a nice one. Inspect it to make sure that it's in good condition and that it's not all rounded off. It is a, uh, an imperial size. It's not a metric size. And I forget what size it is, but it's the size that fits uh, Oh, let me see. I think it's like 3.30 seconds. I'm looking over at my chart there. I think it's 3.30 seconds, but use a nice one. I've seen so many, uh, you know, unfortunately, so many people, you look at their tool collection and their screwdrivers are all rounded off, their hex keys are all rounded off, and they wonder, why am I strip stripping screws? Well, get quality tools. They're not super expensive. So, and also, the ball end of a ball driver is nice for some applications. I use ball drivers all the time. They're great. But when you're going to be working on a small screw that's tightened pretty darn tight, you don't want to use the ball end. You want to use the straight end. So don't use the ball end. Use the straight end. Stick it in. Before you start applying force, make sure that it feels like it's got a nice tight fit. And then if you're confident that you're not going to strip the head, you can remove the little set screw. And at that point, you can adjust. Uh, you can adjust the shaft. And this one isn't adjusting very far, but I think you get the idea. So the next thing that I want to talk about is very similar to the way the torch friction is um, achieved. Uh, there's another pin and another plate. Let me take off the plate here so you can see the pin. What we have here is a 5 16 screw that protrudes all the way through, that's screwed into the back plate, then there's a Teflon washer, and then the screw protrudes outward, and then below that is a pin. So you need to mount this plate, and once again, the purpose of this, this anti-rotation plate, the purpose of that is to prevent the thing from unscrewing itself as it's moved up and down, because obviously with the pin in place, this can't rotate. So then the 
stylish orange handle, and oh, I'm so happy to be getting a designer handle in stock at McMaster Car. Uh, the stylish orange handle is put into place and it behaves like a lot of other handles that you may have seen in the past where you can pull it out and adjust its position to wherever it happens to be comfortable uh, it, for your use and, and your style of work. So I think that pretty much wraps it up. I do want to make a couple of more comments. This is the first, not quite prototype release, I call it the pilot run of the Torch Armadillo. And it, it, I, it's been through a bunch of testing, it's been through a bunch of prototypes, and I'm pretty confident that I can safely release it out into the wild and not get into too much trouble. But, you know, new designs are always, they, they always have the potential of unexpected uh, unexpected results may occur. So if you're one of the first few customers installing these for the first time and you run into something that doesn't seem quite right, let me know. We'll work it through together. I want to make sure that everybody gets a good experience with these and if there's problems, I'll fix them. And, you know, once again, be safe, go slow, don't force things, if you think that something is binding or a screw is about to be cross-threaded or a screw is about to be stripped, just take it easy, think about it, and contact me if you need more help. So anyway, I am optimistic that the Torch Armadillo will be a useful addition to the shop, and this is just the first of a series of parts that will be part of a modular system that will include all sorts of interesting things that might slide along a rail and be useful on a glass working bench. And then one final comment before I go, I also want this to be a kind of like an open source, uh, crowdsourced in a way, project. That if you're a maker, if you have tools, if you're uh, comfortable making parts and you'd like to repurpose any of the parts that I've made for your own designs, please, you're welcome to do it. I'm going to publish dimension drawings to, to show all the mounting points, all the screw sizes, and if you come up with something that's really inventive and useful and feel like sharing it with the rest of the glass community, please do. So, anyway, that's about all I have to say today, and uh, thank you for watching, and I wish you the best of luck and success with the Torch Armadillo.